Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Get Down. I'm one of your hosts, John and Daska. With me, as always, is Jacob Ullery. Jacob, tell us what's happening today. So today we actually have an actual interview with the one and only Jason Galasso. This is a very special episode. We yes. wanted to do something really special for our first interview. Mm -hmm. And there's probably, I mean, this is somebody that you were thinking about for a while yeah. that you wanted to interview. Yeah, a long while, trust me. And I guess, like, you know, um, just give everybody, in case anybody that's listening is not familiar with who Jason Galasso is, give us, like, a short little rundown of who he is and why this is going to be such a cool interview for everybody. So basically, uh, Jason was the N in, in sync before Lance or Lanston. Uh, he was the original fifth member uh, brought in by Joey, and we interviewed him and talked about the early days of the group. Yeah, and this is like really, this is really cool. We think everybody's gonna really enjoy this. We did. It yeah. went on like a lot longer than we originally thought it would. Right, which I'm was, glad about. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're not gonna waste too much time. Sort of like, you, I mean, it speaks for itself. Right. Uh, Jason was super awesome. Um, it, we, we, you know, we're just so lucky that he took the time to talk with us. And uh, all right, so here it is. Let's just go right to it. Digital, digital. All right, joining us today on the podcast is a very, very special guest, somebody who has a really unique and cool history with the group, um, somebody that uh, definitely like a lot of really hardcore NSYNC fans would know about. We have today with us Mr. Jason Galasso. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic, guys. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. This is really cool for us, and uh, you know, we're just really looking forward to, to hearing a little bit about your experience and... Uh, I uh, just can't wait to, to, you know, hear some stories about, you know, uh, your history. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we do want to take it all the way back, um, just way to, to the beginning. Uh, how'd you get started in, like, singing and, you know, in, involved in music at all? Well, um, we, my family moved from San Diego to Orlando. Uh, I was 15 years old, and um, I was, in San Diego, I was playing alto saxophone. Oh, wow. And so actually... Yeah, I actually came to Orlando, and uh, so my dad was the choral director mm -hmm. at Dr. Phillips High School. And so, like, uh, you know, I'm a sophomore. I don't know anybody at the school. So all the all the seniors there kind of took me under the wing, the, my dad's students. <laughs> so they're trying really hard to get me in the course, trying so hard. So, like, kind of like my big brother, he kind of, he said, let me just give you some, uh, some math here. He goes, there's three girls to every guy. He says, do the math. I said, okay, I'll give it a, sh I'll give it a shot. So <laughs> I ended up, ended up auditioning, ended up getting in the, uh, in the, the most advanced choir that they had. So that's how it all began. There you go. Um, and actually, uh, you know, going with that, how did you meet uh, Joey Fatone from that? Well, the funny thing is, is I um, actually, I met his brother, Stephen. I actually had a class with Stephen. And... Um, and then his sister Janine came like a year after that, and um, I ended up meeting her and becoming friends with uh, with Stephen and Janine. And they kept telling me about their, their little brother Joey, <laughs> and like you know oh, he's so awesome, he's so talented, you know this and that. I'm like, okay, great. So Joey's a few years younger than I am, so I was a senior, and Joey comes in as a freshman. Oh wow! So that's yeah. So that's when I first met Joey, and that's when we first ended up um, actually you know singing singing together. Did you um did you sing so when you're singing with Joey like what what were you guys in a show together or like how did you like first get to singing with Joey? Well, we were like it was, it was a, there was like many different groups, but it was, it was called Men's Chorus, so it was kind of a, a mixed you know chorus of different age groups and uh, you know just singing all kinds of different different stuff anywhere from like um, magicals to um, uh, gospel not really gospel but like. Um, um, I mean, just all kinds of different stuff. And were you always singing like, uh, like in the bass like style, or were you? Did you kind of jump around a little bit? Like, where where was your vocal range, like in the choirs and everything? I was mainly a bass, but I had I had a really good range. So, like, since, uh, my senior year, I was singing a little bit of uh, a bass, and then I was also doing a little bit of tenor. 
Okay, awesome. That's really cool. So, uh, you know, taking it from like so from high school, you said you're a couple of years older than Joey. So, where what where, where did life take you sort of right after high school? Uh, right after high school, I um, I, you know, I had an interest in, in pursuing entertainment, and uh, but I did you know pretty much what a lot of people did. I went to the local community college, and uh, you know, was doing that. I ended up actually landing a commercial with uh, Sitco Gasoline. Oh, cool. So I uh, did a commercial with them, so that was pretty cool. I did some extra work with uh, shows like, I remember, like Family Matters and a couple other shows like that. And then, um, you know, I, I was wanting to do something with the singing. And then um, it was a couple of years after, Joey gives me a call and uh, tells me about, you know, he met these uh, these guys and uh, wants to know if I'd be interested. That's awesome. But before we get to that, though, I have to ask, because um, I'm a huge Family Matters fan. Um, mm-hmm. what do you remember? What did you do? You said you did some extra work with them. Do you remember what episodes you were in? It was the one when they were out at uh, Disney World. Oh, awesome. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. the one where Urkel has the, you know, the, the transformation chamber and it's in the, yeah, that's a great one. We'll have to watch that, Jacob. Yeah, that's awesome. For sure. That's really cool. <laughs> so you did most of your work then in Orlando, right? So you were still in that area then. And then. And you yeah, said like, I was, yeah, I was pretty much in Orlando the whole time. Yeah. So did you stay in touch with Joey then over the years or was he, did he just remember you from, you know, cause uh, you know, if you were a little bit older than him, uh, you guys maybe didn't have too much time together in high school, but did you guys stay in touch then in the time between when you sang in the choirs to when he gave you that call? Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, he was, uh, he was in a group. I don't know if you've ever heard the big guy. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So Joel Herman, could not sing one time. So they called me. So I ended up filling in for Joel with the big guys for a show. Wow. And that's the one yeah. with uh, Louis Fonzie, right? Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. That's, that's yeah, really so cool. We, that's a good piece of trivia. We stayed in touch, and, uh, you know, then that's why he knew, you know, what I, you know he kind of knew what I, was, what I was interested in doing, so that's why, why he called me. Wow, that's really cool. So that call, what do you remember about that call? Like, did he, so yeah, so he told you, like, he's got this other thing going? Like, I mean, uh, what do you, do you, can you remember any other specifics about the, that, that specific call? Um, I mean, not really specific, specifics about it. I just remember he was telling about, you know, some people, and they're looking to put a group together, a guy group, and wonder if I would, you know, want to come out and meet, and maybe, you know, audition, and, and so uh, that's pretty much what I did. So, yeah, take us through that. So then you go, so did you go, like, where did you go? Did you meet all the guys then at one, in one, at one time? Like, did you just kind of start rehearsing? Like, kind of, can you take us through kind of like your process of sort of meeting everybody and, you know, maybe like rehearsing and all that stuff? Yeah. um, Well, I think if I remember correctly, I think I went over to Joey's parents' house (laughs) and there was only one other guy at the time. The group was still being formed. So I don't know if you, you remember a group called C Note. C Note. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of C Note. Yeah, definitely. Okay, the other guy was Andrew Rogers, who ended up being C Note later on. Oh wow. Yeah, so it was us three, and so we started, you know, just kind of singing, you know, do you know, do maybe some like boys to men type stuff, um, maybe some like uh, some doo wop, you know, just trying to get the harmonies really tight. And uh, then we got, we went through probably like about four or five fourth members <laughs> trying to find the right fit. Um, we ended up actually, me, Joey, and Andrew, with our, we had a manager at the time. And um, we ended up going up to Atlanta, all piling up in my Honda. <laughs> wow. So, taking a trip up to Atlanta, we ended up staying at our manager's girlfriend's place. <laughs> And uh, it was it was just it was just kind of crazy. It was just kind of like you know we were young and we were just you know we we're excited. You know, it was just you know kind of a, a big new thing for us. And it was just it was just cool. It was a good time. In terms of the timeline, like what year are we talking? Is this like kind of ninety four or like in that range? Or do you remember exactly, what exactly okay. ninety four? So then, so then uh, you guys are up there in Atlanta. Did you guys like um, just try to meet with different executives or different people? Like kind of. Um, you know, where, where did the three of you guys go from there? Like, you know, when you guys are taking this trip and, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, make your way in the business. Yeah. I mean, this was like really like in the infant stages. I mean, so there was no like 
you know, really, we weren't ready to, like, you know, we didn't have any songs or we weren't in the studio or meeting with executives or anything like that. <laughs> there was so kind of, I guess, trying to feel our way out at that point. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember this the best I can because it was a long time ago. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, um, you know, so then from that point, you know, I ended up coming back to Orlando. And I'm trying to remember if we did, if we ended up switching managers at that point. Do you know who uh, the Harlem Glo- uh, Globetrotters are, right? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay, uh, yeah. Cur- uh, Curly Neal. Okay. Okay, his wife ended up being our manager after that. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so a new manager takes over, and uh, you know we're still trying to, um, you know, kind of find a you know find a way, and uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden Joey calls me. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to leave the group. I'm like, okay. And um, so I didn't really know what was going on at that point. Do you want me to go, keep going on with the story, or absolutely, yeah. yeah I, for I, sure. I should ask the like with this group that you're in with with Joey at this point. Are you guys sort of writing any material, or you guys are just doing like you said, kind of voice to men and stuff that was like popular at the time? Like what what other types of material were you guys kind of working on? Yeah, it was you know mainly just you know whatever you know the popular R and B was at the time, uh, boys to men, shy uh, stuff like that. You know, just awesome. just really trying to get you know you know hone in our vocals. And the, did, uh, the the harmonies and get those locked in. Did you guys end up kind of getting into the studio or anything like that, or do any um like, you know, did you guys start doing shows then like locally, or um how far did you guys sort of get with the group at that time? No, we didn't do anything like that. That was it was kind of like it was pretty it was a pretty quick time from the from the point where I got in there with Joey until the point where Joey left. Uh, okay. So this this wasn't like a lot of time that that you know transpired. I see. So then it's just me and Andrew, Joey leaves, and then we, me and Andrew end up finding another guy named Freddie, Freddie, incredible singer. <laughs> so it had the three of us together now with Rose Neal, Curly Neal's wife is our manager, and Joey's gone. And so, you know, we're kind of doing our thing. Um, this is all kind of happening, like, really fast. Right. Yeah, it's, it and, sounds like it, yeah. And so then, I'm, you know, then, then I get, I get a, a page from Joey out of the blue. It's Joey. He's like, he's like, Hey, I, you know, I got with some a different group of guys. You know, were over here at the house. It's uh, you know, he told me who it was. And the funny thing is, is I knew JC from before, from when he was in Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, you knew him like personally or you just had heard of him? No, no. I mean, I, I, cause I used to, I used to kind of hang out with the Mickey Mouse Club, like, before that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, I hung out, hung out with, um, I'm trying to think, uh, like, Chase Hampton. Um, yeah. Uh, God, what's her name? The girl, uh, Carrie Russell. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, just a whole bunch of people. Um, so, the funny thing is, I, I ran into J.C. and Albertsons one night. I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? He's like, oh, man, I'm singing with this group. I'm like, that's funny. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. my gosh. Yeah, so so I get that page from Joey. And he tells me who it is. He's like, hey, can you come over to the house when you get off work and come over and audition? So I show up. It's, you know, it's, it's all the guys there, you know, Justin, JC, Chris, Joey. And so we just sang Boys to Men into the Road, one song, and just locked in perfectly. Wow. We've oh got them singing, gosh. and they all kind of looked around. They're like, this is what we've been missing. That's amazing. So, so then suddenly I'm in two groups. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So when you went over, uh, whose house uh, was it that, that you went to? Do you remember where you met everybody? Yeah, that was the, uh, the pretty much the, the instinct house of Dr. Phillips, the Lou Pullman got the guys. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Wow. Okay. And so this is like the, is this like the summer of 95 then? Again, just trying to stick with the timeline here. Is that, would that be yeah, about right? I mean, it's, it's kind of vague, but I think sure. it was around there. I think it was around that time. Oh, that's cool. What else do you remember? Are there any like sort of other little like details that you can remember in terms of just, again, and we know it's so long ago, but just like anything else stick out in your mind, like maybe a first impression of one of the guys yeah, or yeah. anything like that, that, uh, that you can remember? Well, I remember I'm like, I mean, I'm like, dang, Justin is young. <laughs> right, exactly. 
because Justin, I mean, Justin was 14 years old. Mm. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, singing with, you know, guys, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, wow, this guy's, this guy's really young. But then I heard him sing. I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter how he can just sing his butt off. Now, you guys in the gr- other group you were in, you were, you had just three members, right? Yeah. And so was that, um, like, I'm sure you probably had done End of the Road before, like, with that group. So was it different? I mean, were you doing bass there, too? Or, like, I mean, because, again, when you're going from three to five-part harmony, did, how did you right. make that adjustment? How did that work for you? Well, I mean, my part really never changed because, I mean, I just did the bass part. Okay. That. So it was just the upper harmonies that were di- that were different. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. So so then did you meet, like, um, w- was anybody else there? Like, were any of the other guys' like, parents there? Or was Lou there? Like, who was there? Um, like, who kind of who were you auditioning for, like, specifically, if you can remember? Um, I, I can't remember if Lou was there. I know uh, Justin's mom was there. Um, trying to think who else was there. I don't, I don't think Terrence was there. I think it was just Lou, the guys, and, and uh, Justin's mom, I'm pretty sure. And then so you do the you do that one song and then it was just like you said just sort of immediately they just everybody thought it all clicked is that pretty much how it, it went? Yeah, I mean it was just like it was like one song and it's like okay we're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's so cool. And, yeah. and then and then from there like take us and then I guess from I guess what you know how did things go from that point on? So you have that first that first meeting that first audition and then 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 what happens? Um, well, so, you know, I'm kind of, you know, there's no, uh, no contract signed at this point. So, you know, I'm kind of still trying to decide, you know, what I want to do, you know, what direction I want to go in as far as which group I want to go with. Because I remember the first time, this was, this was so important. The first time the Lou Pearlman brought over some music that he was thinking about the type of music we were going to be doing. And, you know, I come from like a, you know, R&B, hip hop background. That's my love, my heart, my soul. Mm-hmm. And Lou comes over with like this, you know, European style techno. <laughs> and it was, I was just like, hmm, okay. So meanwhile, in the other group, we're doing, you know, we're doing R&B. Yeah. Which, you know, that's what I, that's what, you know, where my passion lies. Right. So end up. With the other group, we end up going just with the three guys. We end up going up to Atlanta, and uh, we got a, we got a song, and we end up recording a demo. Oh man! And the demo came out incredible. So now I have that going on, while I have in sync going on, mm-hmm. and you know, and then at that point um, we got going out. We're like you know going and starting to you know shop for clothes. We're starting to talk about, you know, putting the showcase together that was going to be at uh, Pleasure Island. Yep. So there's just a lot of moving parts going on. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm still young, you know, and I'm, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of confusing a little bit, right. you know. Did Lou or anybody else like sort of mention uh, or have any issue with you kind of doing the other group? I mean, did they know that that was happening at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really keep it a secret. I, when I came back from Atlanta, I came actually I came back and went over to the Insync House, and I actually played the demo for for the guys. Oh wow! So they heard the demo that you were doing. That's so cool. Yeah. What, what was their reaction? I mean, I, you know, I, I, they, I think they liked it, but I just think they maybe they were a little bit confused about what I was doing, which sure, I, totally, sure. I totally understand from their point of view. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, you know. And these, you know, this kind of foggy a little bit because, like I said, it was so long ago. Right. Yeah, and like you said, it's happening like really fast too, and like you know, it's it, that's certainly like understandable. But uh, did did you guys with like with in sync was that name uh, chosen already at that point? No, that name was brought uh, was made up by by Lynn Justin's mom, and it's the the last name the last letter of all of our first names. Right, right. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's why Lance is not really Lanston. But anyway, right, exactly. right, right. Yep. yep. <laughs> Do you were you there then when when Lynn came up with that, or when somebody first brought like, hey, the, in sync, this is going to be our name? Or do you remember anything about how you know that was presented to you? Yeah, I remember actually being at the house and Lynn kind of you know coming up to all of us and like, I don't know if we're watching a movie or something or because we hung out a lot too. We, um, 
watching we were watching some movie, I forgot what it was, but I think she came up and said, Hey, I have a great idea for your name. She presented it to us and it just like it was like, Wow, okay, that's that's an incredible idea. That's awesome. That's really cool. Well, so you hung out at the house a lot. Like, what do you remember about the house? Like, can you, um, like, who was, like, were the, were the guys, like, mostly living? Like, who was living there exactly and who was just hanging out? Do you, do you remember that? Well, it was pretty much everybody was living there except for me and Joey. Okay. Because I live, like, probably, like, a mile and a half away from there. Huh. So it didn't really make that much sense for me. It probably would have made more sense for Joey, but I think Joey was still working at Universal, too, at that point. So I don't know for sure about that, but I think he was. But, yeah, we hung out, watched movies. We ended up um, like getting a gym membership. We go work out together, <laughs> swim by the pool. Yeah, yeah. And were you, guys, were you guys kind of working on, on the music stuff at this point, too? Like, you know, uh, while you're at the house, would you come over and then, like, you know, rehearse a song or something like that. And like, uh, were you guys doing any of that at this point? Yeah. At this point we would like, we would come over and, uh, Robin, uh, may she rest in peace. She, uh, she would come over and, uh, and she would like, you know, work with us and, uh, kind of work with us like together, work with us individually. And she was just the most amazing vocal coach I've ever experienced in my life. She was just incredible. That's awesome. What well, do you remember? What kind of songs then you were, you guys were working on at that time? Uh, you know, I really don't. I just remember doing like a, a bunch of like you know, kind of, kind of more technical type stuff with the singing, as far as like you know, just the the, um, you know, just getting our sound correct. And then it about did you end up in the studio at all, uh, or this is just like super super early? Like, or did you go in and do any demos? Because um, I think they had the demo. They were had like we're at the pleasure island show right yeah, in october yeah. so yeah. were you doing and did you do any recording or anything no the only, the only thing we did is we went over to uh shaquille o'neal's house and he had a he has a studio there so we were looking at like possibly recording over there um but i, I don't think we ever did that but yeah i mean at this point yeah, i just kind of like when like lou started presenting presenting the contracts and um but then that's when things got kind of like you know kind of a little bit different and then, so, but uh, like, so leading up to this point, you've been rehearsing and then you said you were also doing shopping as well then kind of like getting a look and, and everything together. Yeah. Um, we were going, going out and like, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get our outfits in line. And I mean, look, I, I know nothing about fashion, so I was just kind of, you know, let, <laughs> let the professionals handle it. So yeah, we'd all, we'd all end up going out shopping together and it's like, you know, not spending, not, not spending any, any of my money. So it was just kind of, it was, it was weird, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Was, was Lou like actually shopping with you guys or was there somebody else that he brought on to, to sort of help, you know, with the, with the look and, and style that you guys were going to go for? I, I'm pretty sure there was somebody, somebody there with the, the look, but I mean, pretty much Justin's mom was kind of like the group mom. You know, she I was kind of like always with us, like when we did stuff like that. Um, did, so then you said like Lou kind of starts to get the contracts then this is all, so this is all like, just sort of like, this is all just, you guys are just doing this and there's no, nothing sort of solid in terms of anything on paper at this point. So, uh, and then, so what happens then, uh, what can you tell us about that? Like once the, maybe, you know, once that, that, those talk talks start happening. Well, so, you know, I'm still with the other group at that this point in time. So I get presented with the contract from, from that side. Oh, and so then, they, so, oh, so they, they presented you with something first? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, I was not going to sign anything until I saw everything. And so then I got the contract from Lou. And it was just, I, you know, I took him to, took a boat to a lawyer to have him checked out. And it was just, uh, you know, the contract from, from the, um, the other group, which is pretty much an ind- industry standard contract. And, you know, nothing really kind of funny about it, whatever. But the Lou Perlman contract, he had himself written into the group, not only for what he could recoup and what he would get, he also had himself written in there as the sixth member right. of the group. Wow. So it was just, and it was like, it was like thick as a phone book. <laughs> so it was just like, I was like, wow, okay. You know, so of course I'm involving my parents in this, you know, trying to get, you know, everything, you know, trying to figure it out. So that's where it was at that point in time. 
And did you have any other conversations? I mean, yeah, it's it's like I guess well documented now, like you know what uh, you know what kind of contract that he had. But you guys, you know, obviously you're just being presented with this, and like you know, it's really cool. You're at this house, and you're like, it's really exciting. You know, you're working with vocal coaches and doing all this. So like, you know, what were you know were were any of the other guys? Did they have any reservations? Like, did you guys have any conversations like that about any of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we did. I don't remember, you know, details about the conversations. But I remember, sure. having, of course, we're going to have conversations about it, you know. And uh, I think the other guys were more, you know, just, you know, kind of whatever about it. You know, not really, you know, flipping about it, but just kind of like, you know, you know, we'll just go ahead and sign it and, you know, no big deal. And I was kind of like, I've always been kind of cautious about things like that. And, um, you know, that's why I took it to a lawyer and just want to have it all checked out. So I was, I was probably, probably a little more hesitant than everybody else was. So how did you come to that decision? Was it basically like a matter of, hey, like this one contract on this one hand seems on the up and up industry standard. Like I know these people, I've been working for them for working with them for a while versus this one. I don't know about this. Um, you know, is that kind of pretty much how the decision went for you? Well, I mean, it was that. It was also the fact that, you know, uh, you know, the most important part of it was the music. And you know? so so he brought, like, the stuff that Lou brought, were they were these, like, demos that you guys could actually record, or was it just, like, already, like, CDs or stuff that was already out that, like, hey, this is the direction we want to go? It was presented kind of like there were, like, uh, there were tracks that had vocals on them, kind of like we could put the vocals on them. Got it. Okay. And then at the same time, though, so you guys, you have this demo that uh, you have with the other group, are you guys, um, so is your manager like sort of actively still like, I mean, this is still like a viable thing and this is all going at the same time that NSYNC is starting, right? So your manager is shopping the demo around and that kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, so then I guess when you came to the decision then, like, you know, um, did you have a meeting with all the guys? Did you talk like directly to Lou? Like, um, do you remember kind of how, how that went down? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's probably not my best moment, um, to be honest with you. We, uh, cause actually it was the day we we're supposed to go sign the contracts. And one of the things that we, that we do as a group is sometimes we go to this place called Daryl's on, in, on, in Orlando. So, you know, I'm struggling with the decision. This is the you know, day to come to go to Daryl's, sign the contracts. And at the last minute, I'm just like, I told Joey, I said, I can't do it. Can't go. Uh, what, so that, what was his reaction? Well, Joey's, he, Joey's my friend before that. So he's like, you know, I understand. That's cool. You know, but it did, you know, it did kind of put them in a bad position. And I, I do regret that part of it. I really do. It did, did, so did you, you just told that to Joey and then did the other guys find out from him or did you end up like kind of having to tell just everybody all at once? No, because, I mean, it was, like, right before we were supposed to go to the restaurant. So it's kind of like I told Joey, and Joey told everybody else. I see. Okay. Yeah. Did anybody reach out to Lou or anybody kind of reach out to you and just try to, like, be like, hey, like, you know, you need to rethink this? Did anybody try to convince you to, like, change your mind? Yeah, JC did. Do you, do you remember, like, kind of what he was saying, anything like that? I know, <laughs> again, it's so long ago, but. Uh... No, no, I, I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're making a huge mistake. Little bit I know. I should have listened to JC. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I guess, so after, like, after that decision's made and, you know, you what, I mean, what did you tell them? You just said, like, you know, I mean, did they, did they, again, you played the demo for them from your other group, so they knew, um, you know, that, that that was happening as well. So, I mean, I'm sure that it wasn't maybe the biggest surprise to them, but uh, you went back to your other group then, and you did, did you sign that, that contract? Yeah, I did. I ended up signing that contract over there, and uh, and uh, I was, you know, I told them, you know, because they, they knew exactly what was going on. And um, so I, you know, I pretty much told Andrew, because me and Andrew were kind of like, we became pretty good friends. So I ended up telling him, you know, and he was really excited that I decided to stay over there. And at, so. at, from, from that point, did you stay in touch with Joey or even JC or anybody else? Or when was the next time, like, they had kind of, you know, in sync as a group had sort of come onto your radar? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I stayed in touch with Joey. I didn't stay in touch with anybody else. But um, 
I think the next time it was on my radar was when, um, cause I, we, I was hanging out, God, this is probably 97. And I was hanging out in downtown Orlando and like a whole bunch of people, the mutual friends of ours, we all got together. So I was hanging out with Joey Dan and talking to him about what was going on and, and, uh, what they were doing. They were over in Europe at that point. Right. And, and then, uh, I guess then what, what was going on with your group then? Like, uh, you know, can you take us through then like the next steps of what happened with, with, you know, where, where you did sign with? Well, we, uh, we ended up getting the fourth member finally. And, huh. um, so we ended up being a four person group at that point. We, uh, got a, uh, a, uh, a producer that we were working with, uh, a guy named Gary Williams, incredible, incredible musician. He was our, like our vocal coach our producer and so we ended up kind of doing some like local gigs around Orlando. We um we recorded a video down downtown Orlando for live performance. So we're trying to shop that all around and uh, and, and just some funny things started happening with our management. And um uh, I really don't even know exactly what happened. <laughs> it just it, sort of fizzled maybe like it just sort of yeah. I mean, it's called the music business for a reason. <laughs> sure. Right. Exactly. And the music, yeah. part, the music part is fun, but the business part is just dirty. So, yeah, it ended up just, it ended up just kind of fizzling out, and uh, a couple of members of uh, that group went on to become two members of uh, Steno. Uh, the group was called Unreal. Unreal, okay. Yeah. Does any of that stuff, like, exist? Is it, is it out there anywhere? Do you have any, like, recordings or, like, any of those videos that still from, from back in the day? Man, I, I might have a video somewhere. I, I know I have a tape somewhere of um, that one song we did. I could probably find it. It's on cassette tape. I don't know what I could do with that. Yeah, you should. I, that would be. I'm sure people would love to hear that. Like if you had it, like just uh, you know, um, especially you know, if, you know, something that you were working on this like the same time, you know, um, yeah, that you were in in sync. That's that's really cool. So if you have that, I mean, that's uh, you could probably get that you know easily transferred and you know put out there that's really that's really cool that's a cool piece of history yeah i, I wish we could have like recorded it with like you know today's equipment <laughs> right. we were like we were like in a basement in uh you know in, in atlanta georgia and you know with not that great of equipment <laughs> and uh we basically we ended up doing the uh the harmony part like normally like you know going individually mm -hmm. and you record your part and they'll stack the stack the track right we ended up just going in there, the three of us, and just knocked it out. Live? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys must have been really, well, in sync together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but actually, I have a really funny story about that recording session, if you guys want to hear that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So, you know, this is 90s R&B. You know, so you always you're going to have that, that low-talking guy that does the, the, the speaking part. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. Okay, so I was that guy. Right. <laughs> so I'm in the studio, you know, with a whole bunch of guys, and then we had our, our female vocal coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's kind of hard being, like, really sexy in front of a bunch of guys. Right. <laughs> you know, so so the vocal coach, very attractive lady, she's like, hold on a second. So she comes into the booth with me and just starts – kind of rubbing on me and like whispering in my ear while I'm doing the part. <laughs> and it just, it turned out so good. I was just like, okay, that's exactly what I needed. That's awesome. <laughs> that's the way to get it done. That's good. That's good producing. Gotta, sometimes got to do what you got to do, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to, I know you mentioned, uh, Robin Wiley before. And, um, I guess, uh, you know, cause that's the thing. I don't think that, uh, maybe a lot of people know as, as much about her as they should. And like, you know, um, obviously she's no longer with us. So is there anything else that you could tell us about her and working with her and, um, anything like that? I mean, just from what I remember, she was just a, just an awesome person, incredibly talented, pleasure to work with. I mean, that's pretty much what all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, taking it to like, you know, when, InSync sort of came back to the states, and they sort of started becoming what they were. Um, were you in touch with them at that? Any of the guys at that point, still with Joey or anybody, or um, you know, I guess what was your reaction to sort of the you know the phenomenon sort of that started to to happen uh, around the group? Yeah, I was uh, I was in touch with Joey, and, and uh, you know, and 
was funny was I ended up kind of seeing Chris all over the place at this point. Like downtown Orlando, like he'd be in like a VIP and he'd see me and he'd be like, Jason, Jason, come up here, come up here. <laughs> so I ended up kind of like seeing Chris all over the place, ended up hanging out with him a lot. And um, later on, you know, when Chris came back and he, he got his house, he, you know, I'd come over to his house and uh, he'd throw these huge Super Bowl parties. I'd come over there and, uh, <laughs> So yeah, I was I was in contact. I was actually probably seeing Chris at that point when I was seeing Joey. Oh wow! Yeah. And and then uh, there was a couple things you had done. Like, did you do? Um, was there any sort of media that you did? I know there was like an MT. Was it Jacob? It was the Driven. The Driven, yeah, yeah. On MTV, like you did some interviews for things like that. Was there anything else that you kind of remember that uh, you know you had done? Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, I guess in relation to your history with the group. Um, that was it. Um, ABC called me one time, wanted me to do that show where they have the three people who tell their story and the celebrities right. have to guess which one is telling the truth or lying. Yeah. So they wanted me to do that, so I, but I turned that down. What was your, like, I guess, personal feelings with everything at that time? Uh, you know, take us through that, like, you know, early 2000s and everything. Um, you know, can you take us through, like, you know, what you ended up doing then for, from that point on? Um, I actually went back to went back to school and got my got my degree, and uh, you know, and I, I was I was really happy for the guys, you know. I mean, they deserve every you know every bit of that. And uh, but you know, of course, a part of me was like, man, God, it'd be nice to have that money, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I I don't know. I, I would have been pretty dangerous with that money at that age. I don't know. Yeah, you you you, know, you always you can always wonder about that and wonder what they they did too with with what they had, but uh, they but you would have been in the legal battle too with with Lou obviously if you would have yeah. uh, signed. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess um, what did you end up sort of thinking about the direction that they ended up taking everything in? Like, um, did you? I guess did you like the music they ended up doing? Um, was it you know, or was it still kind of not your you know forte? No, I mean, I, I love some of the stuff they did. Um, you know, not all of it, but I, I did like some of the stuff they did. It was pretty, it was pretty good. I mean, I, I love the stuff Justin did afterwards. That was really good. But, um, yeah, I mean, I like some of the music. I, I, you know, if I knew they were going to do that type of music, I think my decision would have been totally different. Right, right. Oh, did you guys ever dance together? Like, was there a choreographer brought in or anything? Yeah, yeah, we did have a choreographer that came in, started working with us. So you guys, yeah, so that, I guess, yeah, that's what he's asking. So you guys, so you have the vocal coach, the choreographer, and the styling all happening, trying mm -hmm. to put this together. So was the Pleasure Island thing, like, you guys knew that that was happening, and that's what this was all for, it was just to sort of get you guys ready for this one particular gig? Exactly. That's exactly what it was. That was, it was all in preparation for the showcase. Got it. So you were so were you then rehearsing the songs at the end? Like Jacob's more of the super fan and like really knows the ins and outs. Like, <laughs> what, uh, do you, can you list some of the songs that were in the the Pleasure Island uh, thing? I'll be back for more. Um, Dreaming. I know it's a song written by Lou. Um, do you remember doing any other like any of that any other material like or any of that? Did you did you get to that that far? I got I, I got to be honest with you, man. I don't I don't remember that. But Dreaming does kind of ring a bell a little bit. I don't remember. Any details but that does kind of ring a bell mm, that's really cool so yeah so then it, yeah so it's all going to that thing and that's that's really interesting that uh you know again like thinking about it like you know that's uh i'm sure like what was different i wanted to ask like thinking back before what was really different about like you know your experience with the groups obviously it was a different experience but like you have the house and everything and all this here it seems like there's like a ton of money involved like with lou and everything and it sounds like with the other with your other group like it was you know you guys were more you know like you said about the music and sort of you know bootstrapping a little bit like is that is that kind of the right assessment i guess can you compare kind of your two experiences at the same time and like you know what you were thinking at that time yeah, I mean, and that was you know that was kind of an issue too because I mean with Lou, you know, you had the financial backing. You know, I probably you know I probably could have quit my job if I wanted to. <laughs> I probably could have moved into the house if I, if I wanted to. Were you performing at that time? You said Joey was like doing like his thing at Universal at that same time. Were you performing or were you just like reworking another job during this no, same time? 
Yeah, I was just working like a normal job at that point. I mean, that's that's quite a schedule that you're doing. Like you're, you got the two groups and then a you know a job. Like that must have been really crazy. Yeah, I was I was pretty busy. I mean, I wasn't working full time. I was pretty much working part time. So I, I did have, I did make time for it, you know, for it. So, but yeah. uh, but it was a struggle though with, with the with Unreal because you know we didn't have that kind of that financial back. So you know we didn't you know know if we're going to be able to have those resources. You know, we were kind of, that was kind of part of the thing of what we were doing is we were trying to find financial backing. Did, how yeah. did those guys react to you? Um, that was another question, too, I was thinking of before. How did the guys in Unreal, like, react to you sort of, you know, being involved with NSYNC and, and doing this other thing? Well, I mean, they were they were cool about it. I mean, you know, I was straight up with them. I told them, you know, what was going on, and, uh, you know, they were they were fine with it. You know, they just kind of wanted me to, you know, figure out, you know, they, they were trying to, you know, pressure me a little bit, like in a joking manner. But, um, you know, they, sure. they, they understood. I mean, they were in the same boat, you know, same boat I was in. They were, you know, thinking that they had the same opportunity, they would, they would be doing, the, you know, the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. You got to do what you got to do. So, I mean, right. Yeah, that's definitely understandable. So, um, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about kind of what you're doing now and and what you've been up to since the time that we've you know that we were, we were talking about back in the day. So, yeah, can you tell us all about that. Okay, well, I mean, I graduated from UCF in 2003, and uh, pretty much have been in the mortgage business on and off since then, since about 2004. You know, except when the market crashed in 2008. Um, so I'm doing that now. I'm working for a company called Wellspring Finance. Basically, doing you know whatever you know maybe wants to purchase a home, but they want to refinance. I can help them uh, achieve those goals. Uh, what was it about that? Because you know, coming from you know music and and like the arts and everything you were doing and and performing, what sort of drew you to wanting to work in that space? Well, I've always had a fascination with uh, with like finance, numbers, money. I'm kind of like one of those rare individuals who's kind of both left and right brain. Gotcha. So, so I kind of can wear both hats, and so I, my degree was in business finance, so that's how it kind of led me down that direction. That's probably why you were so like in tune with what the contracts were already about. I know, obviously, you said you had lawyers look at it too, but like, you know, it's probably why you were looking at it so critically and saying like, "Hey, this doesn't make these numbers don't make sense." <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. I was I was kind of looking at it from a different point of view than the other guys were. Yeah, you got to wonder if they had like sort of seen it that same way, like what what they would have done as well, just because you know the way that 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 was set up was obviously stacked against you guys. That's a good point. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, um, and then yeah, like you said, if, um, so yeah, so people can get a hold of you then through the website. Then if 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 they're you know people looking to refinance or anything like that, this way you just get a, get a hold of me on Facebook. You know. Send me a friend request. You want to talk about instinct? You want to talk about loans? I'm open to talk about both. Uh, just Jason Galasso in Orlando. That's it. On Facebook. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, you know, say? Any sort of message or anything you want to, you know, just to sort of wrap it up here? Anything you'd like to kind of let our listeners and and instinct fans in general sort of know about your experience? Well, it, it was just a great experience, and it just kind of, you know, blows me away that all these years afterwards. You know, there's still an interest in this, and that's just that's a testament to the group and to their staying power. And uh, you know, I think it's pretty awesome that I had my own little small part in that. And I just want to thank you guys for having me. Absolutely, oh, uh, yeah. We we thank you so much yeah. for your time. This was so cool. Like I, you know, we like, yeah, we can't thank you enough yeah. for doing this. This is this really means a lot to us, and we we really appreciate it. Thank you guys. So, yep, I'm pretty much mind blown right now. Yeah, like well, you, yeah, you, like during the interview, you can't really see it, but during the interview, Jacob was just like starstruck. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't. There's no other word to say it. So that's why I kind of um, was doing a lot of the uh, the lifting in the interview just to keep it rolling. Yeah, he definitely took over. But you came up with the questions initially, yeah. and then what happened was is he kind of took it in a whole new direction. I, like, though we didn't know anything about the other group, right? Right. Like, I mean, that was really cool to hear. What yeah. was like your favorite? Uh, part of the interview, what was like the most surprising thing that you learned? Because there was a lot of little nuggets in there. Yeah, I mean, this well, the most surprising thing is probably the Pleasure Island uh, stuff. Like, I had no idea that they were preparing for that. Like, basically, the whole idea of the group at the time was to prepare for that showcase. I didn't know that he was even a part of it at all. So, well, what was just to bring everybody up to speed? Because I know we moved a little fast in the interview. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to like. 
because we only had limited time with him, so yeah. we didn't want to like you know uh, stop and explain everything or have him explain everything. But tell just briefly for anybody who's not familiar exactly what that was. What it, was that showcase? Yeah, um, it was on October twenty second, nineteen ninety five. It was the first show, or first concert, should I say? Uh, you know, as in sync. And that's what they were doing all the costumes for, learning the, that material that I guess they did. So, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah. And, th- and then in terms of timeline, because I know, you know, this is 25, 24, 25 years ago for him. Mm-hmm. And like he said, I mean, it's hard to, you know, remember like a lot of details. So the timeline might have been a little iffy, but like as best we can tell, like this would have been taking place in the summer of 95. Yes. There was a picture that you found of him with the group, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was August 29th, 95. Okay. And then... Lance, according to Lance, he joined on October 1st. Yep. So, and then the showcase was three weeks later. Yeah. So, yeah, he must have quit in September of 95, and then, like, there you go. And, and they came were, Lance. Yeah, and then they were off. So, you know, just from that, like, little bit, it happened in such a short, so long ago and in a short period of time. Yeah. But, like, man, so cool. So that was awesome that he For got sure. to share, share all that. And, and we really, you know, we hope everybody – Enjoyed it as as much as we did. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you were fan girling and boying out with <laughs> along with with Jacob. And, yeah. You know what a cool guy. Yeah. Uh, awesome stories and just really cool to hear from him. So and like he said too, uh, make sure you know if if hey if you're getting if you're getting a house if you have a house you want to refinance your mortgage or anything like that get a hold of Jason Galasso J A S O N G A L A SSO and he's in Orlando, Florida and uh get a hold of him on Facebook. That's what you mentioned he'd like to, you know, hear from people and yeah. hey, he said he liked to talk in sync with people too. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, uh I'm sure yeah, I'm sure he'd love to hear from you and and uh it was it was great to hear from him. Absolutely. And that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special episode of the Digital Get Down. We'll see you next time. Digital Digital Get Down.